Okay, great. So um, we're back live, Dave Vellante, Wikibon.org, with SiliconANGLE's continuous coverage. We're at theCUBE at EMC World 2011. I'm here with my co-host, David Floyer. David, good to have you on. And we're here with Rolf Jordy, uh, a customer of Atmos. We just had, um, we had uh, uh, Mike Feinberg on, who was one of the fathers of Atmos. You're a, you're a customer, obviously a, a recent customer, because Atmos hasn't been around that long. So we're really dying to hear about your experiences at your organization. First of all, if you wouldn't mind just sharing with our audience, tell us a little bit about yourself, your, your company, and, uh, and your background. Yeah. Thanks very much. So, uh, good, good day for everybody. Um, my name is Rolf Jordi. I'm a senior storage architect within Swisscom. Swisscom is, has I, two legs. One is, is a telco provider within Switzerland, and the other one, we, we are also a service provider. So we host a lot of applications for our customers, the top 500 customers within our country. So, um, 14 months ago, we had the task to uh, evaluate uh, a cheap so storage solution. So we went out to the market, we did an RFQ and an RFQ, uh, etc. And then we ended up with, with, with two vendors at the end. Both were more or less the same price, but one was a lot ahead of the others in terms of green, in terms of power, in terms of rack space, and in terms also of, of the function. So then we decided to go with EMC Atmos. So that's that's how we became. So, uh, so the what, what, what was the what was you said you needed cheap storage? Why was that so important in this particular area? It was important because uh, our sister company, who is the telco provider, needs to have cheap storage for their end users. So it, right now we have the tier one and the tier two and tier three storage, but this is, is much higher in price than an end user customer or consumer is, is willing to pay. So, so therefore, so for this one, we had to evaluate a cheap solution. So what the service was providing a, uh, a storage for phone users or uh, yes, telecom uh, users? What, what we do or what they do is they, they try to build applications where, for example, pictures, photo pictures or backup, uh, BC right. online backups, uh, stuff like this, where they can store their data into right. our cloud now. Okay. So and, and, and they don't want to pay anything for it? Uh, they pay something for it, yes, <laughs> of course. <laughs> so, Ralph, you're a you're senior storage architect. You're, you're not a senior storage cloud architect. You are now, I guess. <laughs> but, but prior to that, I, I presume you have um, experience with traditional storage systems, whether oh, block yeah. or file. Yeah. What, um, what's different in this world? What's changed? I would say this, the, the speciality here is and that, that's, that's the hard piece for me now for to, to my colleagues is we have object-based storage. It's not file-based, it's object-based storage. So you have the chance to, to, stay, to store metadata in it, you have the chance to apply policies, etc. cetera. So that, that's a big change in the mind of, of my colleagues because they, all they want to do is to store their files. And now with, with cloud storage, it's not that easy. That, that's, the, that's the drawback right now. We have an API, we have a, a good solution, but we don't have the applications yet, the enablers, the connector, or, or how you want to name it. This, this is still missing right now. But the, 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 the uh, end users or the applications, they develop now against the API. So the ones, they made the mind shift already. They, they're ap absolutely happy with it. And, uh, so so the like others, they have to do the mind So shift. you're talking about a whole yeah. new perspective on adding business value um, because you can apply metadata principles, you can apply policies and so forth. Can you, you said the ones that have done that and exploited the architecture more fully are, are really happy. Uh, can you give us some examples so we can sort of visualize that? So, you, you mean in terms of policies? Yeah. Well, you said that, that there's a, there's a, there's a there's a capability yes. now with object storage that you didn't have before, and some people have taken advantage of it. Yes. Certain applications. Can you share like, what examples there, there might be? So, so for, for example, you you can set, you can store a policy which means important. If this is object is important or not, based on this, then you can apply a policy which means I need one local copy, I need a mirror copy, or I need the geo parity. So that, that's one of the things. And also age-based policy, for example, 
I can say, um, delete this object after 30 days, and this is something they will implement or uh, with the 2.0. So we have you have the H-based policy which automatically deletes the object, and that's that's totally new for so that, that automation. And yeah. so, so it's the method being able to look at the metadata, yes. find stuff, uh, uh, apply yeah. different policies, yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. performance uh, characteristics, etc. So you have to think about your architecture of your applications uh, differently, I presume. Yes, it is, and and that's that's a task of my my colleagues who are the software architects that they that they have uh, to rethink how they want to store the data. Right. So we, we had an application which which are storing they, they're using a REST API and the backend they they're storing the data as an NFS application. So I came back and they said, hey, "Why are you using this that way? So complicated." Uh, that's that's how we did it for the last couple of years. So I said, no, you have to change it. So I did, I explained them how it works, how the opportunities are, and they are absolutely happy to do to change this, this now. Right. Because right. it's 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 the right way to go. It's still a far way to go because then, as I said, it they're not used to it to an mm. application API. Mm. But I hope, I hope, and I bet that within maybe a year or two, uh, uh, let's say. Uh, a REST driver will be part of, of, of every uh, OS. Yeah, I think right. you're right. That's, fact, that's right. my wish. Yeah, I yeah. think you're, but I think, I think it's your, maybe your prediction as well. I, we, I, I called it a niche before, so just to poke Mike a little bit, because we've <laughs> talked about this, David, for a long time in the Wikibon community about um, the potential for this type of storage. It's, it's enormous. Yep. Um, it's just an, an exploding market. And a, a, that the need to rewrite applications is one of the, the barriers to that, that growth right now, but it really is going to be exploding. What, what are you seeing there? Yeah, I, I, I agree with you that it, the, the opportunity in, in a number of different areas with storage now is how do, what are the applications that can really uh, exploit these new technologies? Um, there are a number of new technologies that's coming in. One of them is, is, is Flash. We've talked about it before. Really, how do I architect new systems to take advantage of that? Develop them in completely different ways. Uh, solve completely different problems with them. And, so, and design absolutely. something that is much more effective, much more intuitive to use, much easier so why, for the end why, user. Why couldn't you use, let me just ask a really basic question here. Why couldn't you use traditional storage to do this? Why couldn't you use a you know, traditional file-based storage to do this? Too expensive? Well, too, but, but too you, you, you would have to put a database there. Yeah. Uh, and once you put a database there, you, you, you're, struck, you're, you're, you're constrained by that database. So being able to separate out the metadata, put it somewhere else, uh, being able to access that quickly, put that in a you know, special place so you can access it quickly, mm -hmm. just gives you automatically a whole uh, uh, much quicker way of being able to a, a, apply it, but B, more importantly, change scale it. it. And scale it. Scale it, yeah. change it. You can do all of that without having to touch any of the rest of the stuff. Is that right, Rolf? Absolutely. That's really Absolutely. So what's the current scale of the c capacity that you're talking about? Can you talk about that on the, so, the users? or how, how, do you, how would you quantify that scale today? And, and where you, do you see You it mean going? the base installation, what we have right yes, now? Yes, yes. So, so the, the setup we have is we have four different locations. So one, two so are 10, 15 kilometers away, and others are 100 between each other. We, we built our internal network, because we're also a, a network company. And from there on, we, we set up also the, then the GeoParity. Right. So we forced EMC and we, ha we developed a very... So you, you, asked, you, you asked EMC for absolutely. this, Absolutely, yeah, absolutely. So why was it so important for you? Because uh, it's, it's important for us to have a green solution and also to have a Jeep, Jeep. and with, with GeoParity, you can save a lot of, of storage because you only need 1.3 factory instead of two, so and that's, that's the first, project, uh, the, the first uh, product who, who supports this. So we, we were talking to, to EMC a lot and say, hey, we want to use this and this and this in that way, and we, we did a lot of, of measure and, and also disaster failure and we took down the whole site and, and checked are we still able to to, to read to the recover, data, to right, write the data, right. what's the impact if a, if a whole yeah. site is down. Uh, and then uh, the original idea was to have first a local copy and then H-based or, or local mirror and then H-based replicated to GeoParity. 
but with the experience we made and with our internal network, the latency was so low, then I said, no, I, I just go from day one with, with the GeoParity, and that's, that's how we work right now. Cool. Right. So to answer your question, right now we have 720 terabyte draw, so we have four times six nodes installed, and uh, we, we're running now 1.41. And, and, and this is obviously growing. The service is working, customers Absolutely. love it. Yep. And, and and so if you looked out five years from now, is it just gonna, gonna dwarf the capacity that you should see today? And will this architecture take you there? Um, if I can believe, and I hope I can believe the uh, my colleagues' uh, forecast, then it's gonna be a couple of petabytes. A couple of petabytes? Yes. Yeah. Right, of, right. And, yeah. and being able to respond that quickly with traditional storage and, and grow and scale, it just it, would have been... It's, too so much of a challenge, too expensive, too complex. Yeah, and I mean, we heard yesterday, so in the future, the, or the, the, the data explosion will be immense, and what, what they said yesterday is, if I remember correctly, is roughly 90% 90, 90 is unstructured data, right? and yeah. only 10%, and what we have right now is more or less everything is, is structured data. And this, this is on tier one, this belongs to tier one, that's fine. But all for the rest, that's fine if, if, you, if you use it in the cloud. Yeah, so basically, we heard, well, you're right, I, I was listening to right. Tucci as well. He said that uh, last year, uh, 1.2 zettabytes uh, were created in the digital world. A zettabyte is a billion trillion. Or maybe it's a trillion billion. <laughs> um, either way. It's the same either, either way. way yeah. and, then, and then 35 zettabyte, zettabytes by the end of the decade. That's a 44x increase. That's, Do those numbers surprise yeah. you? Uh, yes and no. Because I just talked to, to, to my colleague who, who is running the, the whole operation business. And he said he doubled, almost doubled the tier one within the five, uh, five, uh, first five months this year. So, so right. people must be buying it. Yeah, yeah. absolutely, <laughs> yeah. absolutely. So, it's, so is this going to take you to video as well? Have you got video up already, or is you uh, is that a whole new can of worms? No. Uh, also, we have a customer who he will upload movies into it. Right. We have another internal customer who will also upload uh, video clips into it. Right. So, these are the two applications which they develop now against the API. Yeah. And one, once I have a. A good, let's say, the cloud drive or a good enabler for for this, then it will it will rock. I, I'm right. I'm sure, a hundred percent sure. So, Ralph, um, yeah. this is very interesting. Um, we, we don't talk to tons of, of guys doing object based storage because they're you know, they're not everywhere, right? But they're yep. starting to become more and more prominent, and more people are interested in this technology. What advice would you give your fellow storage colleagues that are thinking about moving to object storage and cloud storage? Uh, maybe some things that you would have done differently if you had to do it over again. Share with your peers what you would advise them. So, good question. So, I would say, or for me, number one is security. It's absolutely key. So, I want to go. I want to sleep well. So, for me. Everything has to be secure. That, that's, that's the most important thing. Especially in Switzerland. Especially in Switzerland. So yeah, yeah we have the reputation of, of <laughs> safe money. So I hope we also will have the reputation of, of safe data. So <laughs> again, that, that's, that's key number one. So separate your traffic from the internal network versus the, the external network. That's key number one. Um, Number two is do a good planning before how you want to set up it. Don't jump into it too fast. Think about, go one step back, think about, rethink about how, how you would deploy it. And i proud to, say, to, be, to, to, to be able to say that I would build it the same again, in the same way. Absolutely. Congratulations. Outstanding, uh, yeah. Rolf Jordy from Swisscom. Thank you very much for coming on theCUBE and sharing your experiences, sharing your knowledge. The Cube is all about sharing knowledge. And uh, we've got hundreds of thousands of, of people out there watching this week. So thank you very much for, for coming on. Thanks.